What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So today's video is a fun one for me. I jinxed myself last week by talking about power outages and fish tanks, and we'll talk about how I had some power outages going on in the 220 and all my tanks here in the basement. I've also got an update on some action going on in the greenhouse but it's sunday it is species sunday i got three species of plants i want to talk about with you as well as show you a little bit of fish action here we go first things first a couple of quick announcements tomorrow is the last day you can get a free f-r-e-e -E, free can of fooball bug bites sent to you all you have to do is make a 30 second video of why your fish deserve some free fooball bug bites no gimmicks no bs you link the video up in the comments, either this video or one of the other videos. We'll give you an email address. You send us your address there privately, we'll mail you some food bug bites. No video, no free bug bites. The funniest video, and there's been some funny ones. Dudes eating uh, fish food, uh, people making fish tank wraps, so a lot of hilarious stuff. The funniest one that I think is the funniest wins a free FX4. It's easy. Second thing is, uh, this week is the aquatic experience. Like, I'm super pumped. Instead of talking into a camera lens, I actually get to talk to real live humans in the flesh. That's in Schaumburg, Illinois. It's the fifth year. It's fifth year. It's like a senior. It's like a grown man. Super jacked about that. Uh, I am pumped. They got the aquascape, live aquascaping contest by our friends at Fluval. Uh, too much to list. I mean, it, it, it's the big daddy. It's close. I'm driving. I'm bringing fish tanks. Like, I'm jacked about it. I'm going to be up there Thursday. Uh, super excited doing a bunch of giveaways, having a great time. I'm excited to actually see people in person, too. So that's what's going on. And then finally, uh, today is the last day of the bottom. We'll get one free on 20 species of plants like I got going on on my site. Bunch of crazy stuff. I'm gonna show you a little bit of that later on in this video. Let's roll to the greenhouse, but first I do wanna show you something I'm bringing with me to AE. And speaking of the aquatic experience, why not making an aquatic experience with something that's a great experience of aquatics? How about this monster plant right here? I talk about this. This is one of my favorite pond plants, but unfortunately this red stem talia will not make it over the winter. It got down to 37 last night, so I'm debating uh, bringing this plant with me. I brought it last year. The problem is, you can see way up here. Let me just show you this. Like, like I'm I'm six foot tall, right? So look, this thing is like way taller than me. It sits and actually like sucks and like waves like itself neck waves itself next to me uh, while I drive. So at the end of the show, I cut it down. So I'm probably gonna bring that big boy with me to the aquatic experience. Cause it's a monster and it's fun. But with these cold winter days that coming, it's fun that I have myself a nice warm tropical paradise in my backyard known as the greenhouse. Please note, we got the condom fully on the greenhouse right here. Josh and I, I wish you could have seen the both of us putting this sucker on like super pain in the butt, but we've got this on here. It actually wraps over the end right here. And then when it gets real cold, we'll clip it right here. Uh, it's over the apex right there. The rib side is in here. Got a hole in the condom, look out. So super pumped to have this on here. And uh, I'll show you inside of the temperature difference. It's 37 degrees out here right now. As we roll into the greenhouse here, I'll show you what we got going on. Obviously we got some fun plants happening. Buy one, get one free ends today. But uh, there's some of the Java moss, Liguiga, that's on sale. Actually that's on sale too. That's the Hygrophila cordata red I was talking about. That's a really, really wicked and easy plant. Got a bunch of it there. But here's the temps though, check that out. Uh, it's a little over 60 degrees. I've been going in and out. It's actually warmer than that in here. So uh, super jacked to keep, you know, the temps are in. Condom is on. It was a pain in the butt to put on. Aren't they always a pain to put on? But the condom's fully on. I also want to show this right here. This is my inline water heater. Uh, I added this addition last year. People have been talking about it. This is a stable Eltron. This is not a promotion. I like this thing a lot, though. Uh, great. Like, just this thing is the bomb. The only problem with inline water heaters is they're set to be used in your house. So, like, the lowest temperature setting is, like, 88, 87, then it goes off. So, like, you know, typically you don't want to run your tank at 87, 88, so you got to cut it which is a whole other video, but I gotta, uh, basically, I can link the video up, basically you gotta cut it with cold water, but this is, see what people are asking, this is a bomb uh, inline water here. This is about 1200 bucks though, but you get what you pay for, it definitely been quality. So, let's uh, show you some sick fish. Underneath the halide, Bacopa, Hygropola, Parawatota, all looking solid. A Rotella for you. Started underwater and growth. I want to give you guys an update on Big Mama in here. This is my Big Mama Hamburg Black uh, Swordtail. She has been eating like a champ. I've been keeping her at temps of around, uh, I don't know, a little under 80 degrees or so, and the pH above seven. And you can see she's pounding it. Now she's been fed for two weeks exclusively metrodizodol flakes. 
and I seem to think that's helping. A couple people suggested it was swim bladder. She's able to control herself up and down, so I don't think that's it. They said it was the shimmies. Thank you for all the uh, super info on that, though. But she's eating really well. In fact, I'm just power feeding it uh, these because I just I love seeing her eat. I do the big water changes on here. So yeah, whatever you want to eat, eat. And then of course the male, he's doing pretty well too. So that's two weeks of just purely metrodizadol flakes. Uh, it seems to be killing the internal parasites. This is the stuff I've been feeding them. Uh, also, if you want to know if your fish have internal parasites, one thing to, uh, my buddy Brian pointed this out, is uh, look at their poop. If their poop is coming out stringy or something like that, something is eating the poop on its way out. So something is eating it. That sounds gross, but uh, that's something to look for. So you've got clear stringy poop or whatever. Uh, that's probably the problem. Get this girl back out here again. But you can see she's eating good. And if your fish is eating, you can treat internally. If it's not eating, you're in trouble. She's still got a little shimmy, but she doesn't have quite as crooked of a body as she did either. So the body's looking a little bit better. I am pumped. Uh, shout outs to everybody with the live bear love on this uh, rolling in here. Now Tonina Bellum's no joke either. So yeah, eat up big girl. Look at her, she just pounded it. So that makes me happy. Thank you for all the support with my sick live bear. Let's roll it out into the basement. All right, now let's roll down to the basement. I'll show you what happened the other day. I had a power outage here. A couple of tanks I'm having some fun with here. We got a 20 long. It's been taunting me forever. Obviously, I was playing with the uh, Dragon Stone on a Friday Live video that I deleted, but uh, this is fun. So creatively, I'm having. I'm finally getting my Zen on uh, with the 20 long here. It's been taking me a while to get it going. I do like the Dragon Stone, even though it is cheating. Let's roll over here to the 220. The 220 in the mix. Now, the other day, uh, I, like I added a bunch of fish, so I want to break it all down from head to toe. So I added a bunch of fish. I added the three rainbows. I added the Hamburg Black that's healthy. I'm probably going to treat all of them with the Metrodizadol flakes because why not? I added the Variatus Platys right here. They're just a Variatus, not a Platy, not a Molly. Uh, and then a couple other fish. Okay, so I, what did I do? I added fish. Then what happens? I have a power outage. Now here's the part, okay? So I added more fish. Um, when you add more fish, you're always supposed to do water change because you're just increasing that bio load a little bit. Just increasing and increasing and increasing that. And I can tell because I'm in tune with this tank, in tune and in time if you're down with DJ Shadow, uh, that I have a little bit of algae that got a little bit worse on here because of that. Because I added more fish, I didn't do a water change. There's another one of those sweet live bears. So it's got worse. Well then what happened? Well then the power goes out and I unplug the filter. Now I talked about this in the other video. You click links around here for top 10 fast ways to kill your fish. I intentionally unplugged the filter. Let me show you that. All right, so if the power goes out and it's been out for more than an hour, you want to unplug your filter. This is the plug that goes down to the FX4. Naturally, I didn't know when the power was going to come back on, so I let it sit for a day. So for a whole uh, day, probably two days, I did not have this FX4 on. Note the FX4 is running on an entire 220 here. So I had no power on the 220. Now, when you go to plug it back in, I'm going to show you this in a second, you don't want to just plug it back in because you're going to have all that gross. Once was good, now is dead beneficial bacteria. Now is just straight up ammonia pumping in your tank. So I'm not going to plug it in, but I'm going to show you an easy way to get that ammonia and that nasty water out of the filter with not too much work. All right, so I've got this skank tub right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this FX4 back here. So I'm going to undo this while I'm on camera, which is always easy to do with one hand. And now I'm just gonna roll it into here like this. And I'm gonna let this fill up. Now this is great, because this is all, it doesn't actually smell that bad, but this is the ammonia water that's coming out of the FX4 right here. So it's just draining out, which is perfect. That way I'm kind of doing a little water change while I'm at it, because all this water, you just gotta assume this is nasty water. So I'm just gonna let this run, and uh, when it gets up to about the rim, just so that I can carry it, I'm gonna go dump it, put the filter back on, do a little water change, and roll. And the nice thing about it is I can take it and you raise it above the level of the filter, it'll stop. Let's stop right here and carry it back over. Now we've done a little bit of a drain, plug her back in. And you'll hear it. FX4 power. So that's pumping over here. And she's back rolling again. But folks, it's Sunday, it's species Sunday. I've got three, maybe even four species of plants to show you where I can show you the difference between what above water growth looks like and below water growth looks like. 
and the benefits of each. Okay, so I have here Rotella indica, and I want to break down for you all uh, the difference in this species. But before I actually talk about this specific species, I want to talk about how they do it in nurseries and why they do it in nurseries with growing plants above water. We want to take our plants, we want to sink them below water, submerge below the water. And what happens when they're grown below water is they don't have as much readily available CO2 like they would if they were grown above water in the atmosphere because they're below water, CO2 levels are depleted greatly. That's another reason. The other reason they grow them above water is because something called light. They can get a heck of a lot more light when they are grown above water than below because when they go below water, they exponentially lose light. You can see it when you go into dirty waters or whatever. Like the more deeper you go, the harder it is for light to penetrate. So they grow them up out of the water, which brings us to Rotella indica right here. Now look, this was grown above water originally. You can see the little uh, round leaves right here, round leaves grown above water with Rotella indica. But then once it was sunk underwater, it started to get this thinner look right here. So you can see how these leaves right here are getting grown below water. So this is how we have it. Now look, this is a plant that I've had exactly two months. This is the exact same plant, exact same supplier grown underwater. Now it grows long and stringier underwater. And if we had cut it, it actually would have grown a little bushier, but the exact same plant, all skinny leaves all the way along, uh, you know, same bottom and everything, but it's entirely converted to underwater growth. So this plant will actually do better in your aquarium. This one looks cooler out of the gate because it's got more red as I showed you earlier, but at the end of the day, this is the Rotella Indica that you want because it's grown entirely underwater growth. So that is the difference with Rotella. All right, so we talked about Rotella. Now we're gonna talk about the classic Amazon sword. This is actually a pointy variety that I have on sale. And um, the difference with swords, they look the same except for one big thing. They grow way more stemmy at the bottom, so they've got like a longer leaf right here and the spoon at the top. This is obviously grown above water right here, obviously grown above water right here. Now, here's the fun part with Amazon swords. If you look right here at the center and you see this new growth coming, you can slowly start to remove all this growth. It's not doing you any good because it's grown above water, so you can just take this off right here and this plant will actually send all the energy to these leaves in the center right here, not trying to flick you off. So that's what you wanna do with the swords. They're gonna look the same, but if you see like a massive sword for sale in a pet store, but all the growth looks like this and none of it actually, the leaf actually starts at the base, that's the difference, okay? So you wanna find the leaves that look like, you know, they'd be like this leaf right here, down here starting like that. When you see that growth down there, that's when you're in the money zone, folks. And speaking of above water growth, how about these above water growth munchkins busting into my video? Note to self, get the video done before the kids get home. Here's the deal, we got the above water growth water wisteria in your face and in your grill. You wanna hold this one up? Go ahead, hold it into the camera. That's the water wisteria grown above water. You can look close, you can see how the leaves are on it. The leaves on this are bigger and rounder, okay? When it grows below water right here, it looks like this, entirely different plant. Entirely different plant right here, grown underneath water. Now look, it takes about two weeks for it to go from this stage to this stage. It is a fast grower, but uh, when you get the underwater growth like this, it looks completely different. But why does Dusty have this one right here, the good stuff the kids go for? They haven't gone for it yet. It's because of this, they're going for it. This is a fun one right here that I do not have on my website. It is not on sale like these ones are. But this is below water, water wisteria variegated. That's right, see how the different leaves on there? It's a little variegation. So I'm keeping this and I'm gonna put this underwater and see how it grows and how it looks when it's grown underwater because it could be a funky variety of this that I haven't messed with before. So there is your species Sunday. I got two species right here. Get out of my grill, girls. Let me close this video. If you like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications, little ding, ding. I'll be going live more often on YouTube periodically in the mornings. If you're going to the aquatic experience, drop me a comment, say, yo, D, I'm going to the aquatic experience, dog. Bring it to the aquatic experience. Everybody have a fabulous freaking week. Click the links around here for more videos including my top 10 fast ways to kill my fish where I talk about stuff. Everybody have a fabulous one. Bye. Later. <laughs>